Welcome to the Royal Road School of Carmelite Prayer, where we are currently reading the writings of Therese of the Child Jesus in honor of the Theresian anniversaries 2023 to 2025. Today we turn our attention to the extract, The Smile of the Virgin, take it from Manuscript A, which can be found in Teresa's book, The Story of a Soul. And please note, below you will find links to take you to both the extract itself and a video related to the extract. My greatest consolation when I was sick was to receive a letter from Pauline. I read and reread it until I knew it by heart. Once, dear mother, you sent me an hourglass and one of my dolls dressed as a Carmelite. It was impossible for me to express my joy. Uncle wasn't too happy and said that instead of making me think of Carmel, it would be better to remove it from my mind. I am quite convinced, on the contrary, that the thought of one day becoming a Carmelite made me live. I enjoyed working for Pauline. I made her little things out of cardboard, and my greatest occupation was to make crowns for the Blessed Virgin out of daisies and forget-me-nots. We were at the time in the beautiful month of May, and nature was adorned with flowers and was bursting out with joy. The little flower alone was languishing and seemed forever withered. However, she had a son near her, and this son was the miraculous statue of the Blessed Virgin that had spoken to Mama twice. And the little flower often, very often, turned her petals towards this blessed star. One day I saw Papa enter Marie's room where I was in bed. He gave her several pieces of gold with an expression of great sadness and told her to write to Paris and to have some masses said at Our Lady of Victory so that she would cure his poor little girl. Oh, how touched I was to see my dear King's faith and love. I would have loved to be able to tell him I was cured, but I had already given him enough false joy. And it wasn't my desires that could work a miracle, and a miracle was necessary for my cure. A miracle was necessary, and it was Our Lady of Victories who worked it. One Sunday, during the Novena of Masses, Marie went into the garden, leaving me with Leonie, who was reading near the window. After a few moments, I began calling in a low tone, Mama, Mama. Leonie, accustomed to hearing me always call out like this, really didn't pay any attention to me. This lasted a long time, and then I called her much louder. Marie finally returned. I saw her enter, but I cannot say I recognized her and continued to call her in a louder tone. Mama, I was suffering very much from this forced and inexplicable struggle and Marie was suffering perhaps even more than I. After some futile attempts to show me she was by my side, Marie knelt down near my bed with Leonie and Celine. Turning to the Blessed Virgin and praying with the fervor of a mother begging for the life of her child, Marie obtained what she wanted. Finding no help on earth, Poor little Therese had also turned towards the Mother of Heaven and prayed with all her heart that she take pity on her. All of a sudden, 
the Blessed Virgin appeared beautiful to me, so beautiful that never had I seen anything so attractive. Her face was suffused with an ineffable benevolence and tenderness, but what penetrated to the very depths of my soul was the ravishing smile of the Blessed Virgin. At that instant, all my pain disappeared, and two large tears glistened on my eyelashes and flowed down my cheeks silently. But they were tears of unmixed joy. I thought the Blessed Virgin smiled at me. I'm so happy. But never will I tell anyone, for my happiness would then disappear. Without any effort, I lowered my eyes, and I saw Marie, who was looking down at me lovingly. She seemed moved and appeared to surmise the favor the Blessed Virgin had given me. It was really to her, to her touching prayers, that I owed the grace of the Queen of Heaven's smile. Seeing my gaze fixed on the Blessed Virgin, she cried out, Therese is cured. Yes, the little flower was going to be born again to life, and the luminous ray that had warmed her again was not to stop its favors. The ray did not act all at once, but sweetly, gently, it raised the little flower and strengthened her in such a way that five years later she was expanding on the fertile mountain of Carmel. As I said, Marie had guessed what the Blessed Virgin had given me when I was alone with her and she asked me what I had seen. I was unable to resist her very tender and pressing questions. Astonished at seeing my secret discovered without my having revealed it, I confided it entirely to my dear Marie. Alas, just as I had felt, my happiness was going to disappear and change into bitterness. The memory of the ineffable grace I had received was a real spiritual trial for me for the next four years, and I was not to find my happiness again until I was kneeling at the feet of Our Lady of Victories. At this time, my happiness was restored to me in all its fullness. I shall talk later about this experience, the second grace of the Virgin. At present, I shall explain, my dear mother, how my joy was changed into sadness. Marie, after having heard the simple and sincere recital of my grace, asked me for permission to tell it at the Carmel, and I could not say no. On my first visit to this dear Carmel, I was filled with joy when seeing my Pauline with the habit of the Blessed Virgin. It was a sweet moment for both of us. There were so many things to say that I couldn't say anything at all. My heart was too full. Good Mother Mary of Gonzague was there also giving me a thousand signs of affection. I saw the other sisters, and in their presence, I was questioned about the grace I had received. They asked me if the Blessed Virgin was carrying the child Jesus, or if there was much light, etc. All these questions troubled me and caused me much pain. And I was able to say only one thing. The Blessed Virgin had appeared very beautiful and I had seen her smile. 
she smiled at me. It was her countenance alone that had struck me. And seeing that the Carmelites had imagined something else entirely, I thought I had lied. Without any doubt, if I had kept my secret, I would also have kept my happiness. But the Blessed Virgin permitted this torment for my soul's good, as perhaps without it, I would have had some thought of vanity, whereas humiliation becoming my lot, I was unable to look upon myself without a feeling of profound horror. What I suffered, I shall not be able to say except in heaven. While speaking about the visit to the Carmelites, I am reminded of the first visit, which took place shortly after Pauline's entrance. I forgot to speak about it, but there is a detail that should not be omitted. The morning of the day I was to visit, I was thinking things over in my bed, for it is there I made my profound meditations, and contrary to the bi- bride in the canticles, I always found my beloved there. I wondered what name I would be given in Carmel. I knew there was a sister Therese of Jesus. However, my beautiful name of Therese could not be taken away from me. All of a sudden, I thought of little Jesus whom I love so much. And I said, Oh, how happy I would be if they called me Therese of the child, Jesus. I said nothing during the visit about the dream I had while wide awake. But to good mother Marie de Gonzague, who was asking the sisters what name I should be given, came the idea of calling me by the name I had dreamed about. My joy was great, and this happy meeting of minds seemed to be a singular favor from my beloved child, Jesus. Amen. So this is the end of the study guide to the Smile of the Virgin. So there was initially the introduction, and today we actually heard the extract itself read. Once again, please note that below there is a link to the text itself and to a video relating to the text. I hope this is beneficial to you, and may God bless you and yours. Amen.